the most detail that we're going to go through today is about the basics of your profile. And then we're going to have a look at what next steps are there that you can you can look at it doing. So um, if we if I want to just share a couple of statistics with you um, that you might want to just kind of you, you might find this interesting. I just want to put my notes in front of me. So first of all, the the Canadian market, if, if we just have a look at that on LinkedIn itself, there's 17 million users on LinkedIn just in Canada. So how do you stand out between 17 million people? That's not worldwide. It's just in Canada. OK, so worldwide, um, 40 million people are using it to find a job. So you're not the only one that's trying to find a job in Canada or in, in, in the world and it's being used. It's telling me that people are using LinkedIn. They are using it effectively to, to find a job. 14.3 um, million people are hired every minute on LinkedIn, every minute. So you wanna know if a recruiter's on there? He's on there, okay? If, you, if your profile um, is not adapted to stand out, you will not be one of those 14.3 million people to stand out on that, okay? Um, and then an interesting statistic that I found as well is that 81% of talent professionals have said that they will be using LinkedIn, okay, um, as a virtual recruitment platform once the pandemic is over. So it's something to stay. Um, so the effort, again, what you put in is what you're going to be getting out of that, okay. So... Um, 94% of, of recruiters are using candidates to vet um, to, to vet uh, people on, on LinkedIn. So they will be checking it. They will be checking your social profiles. Um, it's one of the places that if you are not on there, um, you might be missing out in terms of, of, of getting your name out there. Okay. If, you're, if your profile is, is uh, updated, if it's optimized with the right keywords, those kind of things will help you to get up into search and appear up into search um, in more searches on LinkedIn. And that's what we're going to have a look at today is how to optimize the basics of your profile so that you can get to the, the, the stage where you appear in searches, the keywords that, you've, um, that you are looking for, the job that you are finding for, are you appearing in those searches? Okay. Um, so today we're going to look at seven sections. Um, and again, this is just an overview of where we're going with, uh, with LinkedIn. It's not in detail. So, but before we go through that, let's have a look at what is happening in Canada. Can you see the slide um, with the highlights? I don't know if you can see the top section if, if uh, my screen is moving away from that. But this is going back into 2018. And the reason why I'm putting this out there is just to why I'm going back is, number one is that the statistics, uh, I want to look back and tell you, to have an understanding of what is happening in Canada, how many people are coming in? So, and, and what is happening, how, why it's important for you to do the effort on something like your LinkedIn profile. So again, if you're having a look at um, the, the provincial nomination program, 62,000 people was a, uh, you know, went into that program in 2018. I can show you on the next slide, I'll show you the statistics for 2019 and you'll see how that is increasing. Um, but they were, 321,000 uh, PR, uh, PRs that, that was admitted. So it's not small numbers of people coming into Canada. These are Canadian statistics, okay? Uh, international student permit holders. So the study permits, the guys that's doing study permits, you're not one of 10, you're one of 720,000 back in 2018, okay? Um, so there's a lot happening in terms of, of, of Canada of who they are allowing in. You will see, um, you know, with the immigration process that you're going through, it's not only South Africans coming in. There are many people right throughout the world that's coming into Canada. So it, need, it needs extra effort from your side to ensure that you stand out amongst this whole lot of what you can see there. Looking at 2019, um, you can see the statistics is, is going up. So we've got work permits, 400,000 work permits, um, 341,000 PRs that was admitted um, into Canada. So there's a, it's a big amount. And then the one that's quite staggering to me would be that 80% uh, you know, of, of, of the immigration 
are the PR people, permanent and non-permanent immigration. So it's, it's telling you that Canada is bringing in people. It is looking after how do they improve the processes. Um, you can understand with that amount of people coming into the country, you can understand why the processes needs to be as they are. The great thing about it, it's working. Um, there is a place, there are many ways of getting into Canada. And today's platform won't be looking at how to get into Canada. That's definitely not it. It's kind of just how to use the system to make it work for you. Okay, so today we're gonna look into the basics of updating your LinkedIn profile and specifically these ones that you can see on here. So we're gonna look at the top fold, which is your profile photo, your background, your headline, your address, audio recording. We're gonna look at your summary, go through about your work history, what you need to put into that. Again, are your certifications, your endorsements, influence and groups, um, those kind of things. So I don't know if you, if you just have to stand back for one minute and have a look, if I give you this, and I say to you, can you tick the box that you've done all of this on your resume, on your resume, obviously, of course, first, and then on your LinkedIn profile? Do you have this? Um, do you have a profile photo? Do you have a background photo? Do you have, what is your headline saying? These are the things that we're going to do. And I would like to call them the low hanging fruit of what we are doing so that we can say, if we improve every bit of this, then we have we've started to scratch the surface of what is going to work and what is going to help you. It might not, again, I wanna say, this is not going to make you find a job. This is going to just get you into the system and make you stand up. Um, what you do with it going forward, once you've improved on this continually is what's going to help you find a job. Okay, so we're looking at the top, um, the top fold. This is called your top fold. Um, and that includes your profile photo, your background image, your headline, your address, okay, and then the audio recording. So some of these are quite cool, and I've um, I've put in, I've included because I'm quite proud of myself and uh, proud of my photo that I've got on there. Um, so I thought I'll put that on, and so you can see my pretty face. Not that you won't see that enough today, but um, so we'll go through what that is. But this is what people will see. This is the first six to ten seconds that people will see. This will determine, will people go on or would they go, no go? Okay, so whatever you put in here is going to make that next step. It's gonna open that next door. So you need to give them enough of the information so that they can go through that. Okay. Go through that, yeah. So it's your, it's your prime spot. Think about that is of the front door. What is standing, if people have to stand in your front door, are they gonna knock or are they gonna go, I'm not knocking at this door, I'm not entering. Okay, what, what is gonna happen with that? Okay, um, so we'll, we'll be taking each one a little bit more in detail and, and going through what works, um, a couple of tips, use them as you need um, and you will see that. So just some, some kind of background information on this. Um, if we have a look at the photo, so I'll go into detail, let me go back there. So I've got a couple of examples of photos and what it needs to look like, okay, and, and some tips around that. Your, your photo, if you have got a photo, so think back, everything that I'm saying today is have a look at your own profile and think about this. Your photo, if you've got a photo on, a good photo on your profile, you will get 23 times more views um, So to, to help you to stand out from that rest, okay. Couple of tips, it's practical and some of these sound logic, but go and have a look at your photos. Go and have a look at what you want to say to people and that will determine what your photo would look like. It doesn't need to be a prof professional photo, but try and keep it to a, a neutral background. Um, try and be approachable, smile. I think that's the one thing that we difficult. It's you know kind of just smile in your photo so that they can see it. You'll hear this often, no cats, no dogs, no kids in the background, it's logic. Okay, if you are in a creative industry, um, you know, it might look slightly different, but if you are looking for a job and what we are discussing today, try and keep it neutral. You'll see the two photos here. One of them, um, this is Mariska. She um, is, is part of the, uh, she uh, is one of my uh, friends and colleagues, not colleagues, but she, she's part of a, a job seeker currently. And I chatted with her to get her profile, but it's a good photo. It might be a little bit blurry because I, I just blew it up, but it gives you neutral background. You can see the person smiling, head and shoulders. 
um, it, it's kind of just uh, that's what they would need to see. You try and look approachable. Okay. Um, so I want to go back just a second. Uh, or, or, or let me do this. Does that make sense? Keep it clean. Keep it easy. Get a professional photo if you need to have it done. It will help. You don't need it, but it will help if you have a good professional photo. This is how you would get there. So on your on your profile, if you're on your LinkedIn profile, you can click on your photo, you can edit it in here, and you can then start editing all of the information that you will see on here. Okay. Um, and we're going to go through all of that detail. So just a couple of notes on what you can see here. What I have got on, on the, so you've got your profile photo on there and we've discussed that now. This would be your background image. Um, it could be a standard background image, but it's a prime spot again. You wouldn't want to leave that blank. It's just, if you've got the space, why not use it? So it, it depends again, what industry you're in. It depends again, if you are looking for a job or are you using it as a business or an entrepreneur that will try and use that space creatively, um, professional, but creative. So I know Tina that's on the call today, she uses it fantastically. She's got her phone number in there. She's got her email address. She's telling people what she is serving. Um, and she's a service provider around that. If you, um, I've seen some people, some, some uh, job hunters that's got a photo on the background if they are in the mining industry, a, a photo that's got that in the background, maybe with a, with a short quote or something that means something. For me, I uh, took three words that really means something in the industry of who I serve, what I do. What does that mean? For me, it is I, I help, I kind of help people to think through what they do. I help them to create what they need in order to, to get where they need to go. And I help them grow. And then I want them to immediately see my email address and my website address so that they can get there without struggling to know how to get a hold of me. I want them to get a hold of me quickly. So you can put your phone number in there if you want to. If you are, a, 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 if you are looking for a job and you're in South Africa, don't put your South African phone number there. It's not going to help. Okay, unless you're looking for a job in South Africa, then that might help. Um, but yeah, you can you can use it blank. It's not going to do. It's not going to be anything negative, but it will only be positive if you do. So just a thought around that. So your headline, again, your headline would this be that prime spot that we spoke about, and it would look at the details that you've got here. So when they search inside inside your profile if, if a recruiter starts looking at your profile is everybody happy everybody good give me a thumbs up you good okay cool okay cool so when we have a look at your headline and your and and your description that you've got this is where you will have your details um, which includes that social media strategist thought creator that's all of that including helping small businesses so if you put um, if you put keywords in there, the system um, that recruiters would use, those would be keywords that you, you will pick up. So try and use keywords that would relate to the job that you are looking for. Um, and uh, because this is also not the time uh, to put in something like uh, tech guru or profile ninja. It's not, it's not kind of just don't go there. Okay, so I know that at, at one time that was that, uh, you know, it, it was done. Innovator, unless you are a rocket science scientist then, and for real, then rocket science would, scientist would work there. But otherwise, keep it simple. Whatever it is that you do, um, that is what you need to put in there. If you're providing a service, put that in. Mine might be a little bit more creative than what you would see with different profiles. But again, it serves to the audience that I'm talking to. If you are a town planner, put in town planner, okay? If you are, and again, understand that the wording, have a look, when you do your research for job searching, you'll find that certain words and keywords would mean different things in different countries. So whatever you might call yourself in South Africa, be sure that that is when you start looking for a job and the keywords that they relate to each other. If you're called something else in Canada, then you need to ensure that your keywords that you put in there relates to that and speaks to what you are serving because that it, that will be part of the job search that recruiters would do that. Um, a practical searchable keyword. I like to put in there what I help people do. 
So how do I serve the people that I serve? You can do the same as a job searcher. You help small, you know, you help if just, just kind of think about what are you doing? The one thing that you do to help people in the industry that you are in or the job that you're specifically doing. Okay. So what I would recommend a couple of tips that you can do there is look at, again, look at what kind of job you are looking for. So when you start your job search journey, go and have a look at what those keywords are. Start lining them, get yourself about 10 to 20 keywords in your industry, in the job industry that you're looking for. Write that down. That is important. See if people in the industry, in the country that you are wanting to move to, in this case, Canada, are they using those same keywords? Are they are they ask, you know, are they, if, if that's what you're looking for, that is what you're going to need to put down because you'll see as I go through that now, it's called keyword density. You're going to need that often. You're going to need that in your cover letter. You're going to need that in your resume. Wherever you go, those are important keywords. So you would want to put that down and make note of that. Um, look at what are the skill sets that people are talking about. So if you are looking at jobs, so not only go and look at people that do the same thing that what you do, but in Canada or worldwide, but look at the actual jobs. If you start looking at the, if, if you go into Indeed um, and even on LinkedIn directly and you see a couple of jobs that you say, okay, well, I, I think I fit this bill. Have a look at the skill sets that people have or the skill set that they're asking people in this specific job. Go and have a look. Are they in your headline? We'll go through the summary and we'll go through your experience because you're going to need to duplicate that in there as well. But you're going to need to pick up on that and to understand what is it that you're looking and are you serving them with that content? Um, again, I've mentioned look at people with the same profile um, and see what they've got in their headline because you'll be able to find out what, what it is. So uh, you might want to do that. Um, Another thing that you might want to make a note of here is we're going to go down to the endorsement section and then it'll start making sense to you. But if you are looking and you are saying you are into strategic planning or you are into marketing or you are into development or whatever it might be, if you're a, you know, if you are a, C, you know, a SQL developer or a, whatever it might be, um, is that part? Are you, if you are mentioning it in your headline, are you being endorsed for that? If you're not being endorsed for that, then maybe you need to have a look at that. So we'll go through in that detail. But that needs to say that it corresponds with each other. Does that make sense? If you start looking at that, saying, okay, cool. You know, these keywords, Am I? if I'm looking for a job in a specific industry, if I'm looking for a job at digital strategy or and strategic marketing, or I'm talking about whatever it is that you are doing, if you're saying that you are a specialist or you want to become an engineer or civic civil engineer or whatever those keywords are, has someone endorsed you for that? Because you know what, you need to put that into your skills, you need to put that into your skill sets. And if you are saying that you're a civil engineer or you are in digital strategy, for instance, where I am, if no one endorsed me as a digital strategist, then how can I, you know, how can I become the thought leader of where I am? How are people going to say, yes, she's ticking the box on what she needs to do? Okay. Um, an easy way of putting them in there is I've divided mine with vertical um, vertical line dividers. You can put, some people put little stars and emojis in there. I would, if you are in the job searching category, and that's why you're here, I would move away from any emojis. Please be careful with using them. Okay. Use them sparingly. Um, you'll see in my about section, my summary section, I use them. I use them sparingly and I am in the creative industry. Um, for you, as unless you are applying for a job where you are in the creative industry as a graphic designer, web, those kind of things, content creator, be careful of using emojis. It, it, it might not work that well for you. Again, a couple of a quick notes here. Have a look at this. We're going to chat through this, the address that I've got there. People's connections. If people see that you've got enough connections here, it means that you are active on LinkedIn. If you've only got 100 connections, it might not look as positive. Um, so to ensure that you kind of just look at what your connections are, where those connections are, your first, second and third connections. We're not gonna talk about that today, but it's critical if you wanna start networking and how you are using and how you are reaching out to other South Africans that's in Canada, finding a job, finding out if a person works in a company that you are trying to include. You know what, building your connections, that's gonna be quite critical. Um, and then updating your contact information, it needs to be updated if people want, if you want to be found, it needs to be updated and it needs to be updated with Canadian information. So um, 
just be sure that you've got that. If you're not sure about that, reach out to people, reach out to me, ask me, I am going to do some things about that. Um, so you need to have a look and saying, again, it needs to be keyword rich, it needs to show your skill sets. If you've had accomplishments and it's relevant to what you've got, if you're a top award winner, if you are a writer of a best-selling book um, in your industry, those kind of things, that's where you would put that in. It would say, and then the last line that you can put in there is how you help people. For me, because of the industry that I'm in, I've also included my email address and my website address. It's not something that you need to do um, if you're job searching. Uh, you can do that if you've got enough space. Um, it's up to you, but ensure that you've got your keywords and your skill sets in there. That's what people are going to look for. Okay, so if if we look at this, if they've looked at your photo, they've looked. So if we go back, um, let me just see if I can go back. No. If they've looked, just go back one section. If you go back to this, if they've looked and they see great photo, got a good background on there. They can see what you're going to help with, you know what, all of that. A couple of interesting things just to note here for you would be, number one, the audio recording. I don't know if you guys have, are you using that? Are you, uh, is anybody using that? Is, is it uh, something that you've seen? I'm not sure. Um, but if you've not, not seen that, it's interesting. So as South Africans, if you, uh, my name in South Africa and it is, is pronounced Milani. In Canada, I'm Melanie. If you are, if you are really uh, hung up about, uh, let, let's call it, um, Magrita, you know, Mariska, with Andres, those kind of things. If people are in in Canada, that they love to to pronounce your name correctly. If you are a stickler for detail, or you would want to know, or you want them to know how to pronounce your name correctly. This is a great spot to kind of put that information in there so that they can get to know, they will hear your voice. It's a bit of a personal information. Share that. Um, for mine, I use it as a little bit of a marketing tool to tell people how I can help them. My name's in there. Um, some people have really, someone made a song out of it. But again, he's not, uh, he's not looking for a job. He is looking for clients. So he kind of made a, a cool song about his name. You can do all kinds of things. If it's not there, it's not going to be negative. If it is in there and you're using it and you can set yourself apart, it's great to use. If you, again, if you've got your address here, you'll see mine is, is Baltimore. That's where I live in Ontario. I've changed it to Canada recently. Um, if you're looking for a job, if you've got Jobic in there at the moment, recruiters are not going to, the system, first of all, the tracking, the ATS tracking system will not pick you up. If you've got Johannesburg, Pretoria, Cape Town, Mpumalanga, they won't have an idea. So um, if you want to put that in there and you want to show that you can put a Canadian, uh, uh, you know, you can put the Canada detail in there. If you are putting a specific address in there and it says, let's say Oakville or whatever it might be, the recruiters might find and say, I don't, you know what, this person might not want to work in BC or this person might not want to be in Saskatchewan. So if you're still looking and you're very open to where you want to be in Canada, maybe make it Canada wide. So we're going to move on to, we've gone through that. Your about section. Okay. This about section is really a short and sweet version about you. It kind of highlights who you are. It's not a novel. It is not a page turner. It is a short section highlighting who you are, what you've done, what you've accomplished and why they should look at you. Okay. When they get to that stage. So um, you need to explain what value I bring to the table. You can put in facts, you can put in figures. You see two examples that I put on here. It kind of talks about management consulting services and digital transformation, clients that they've worked, companies that they worked with. Okay. Um, those are important things. You know, C suite leadership, experience, 20 years experience, PwC, it's an international um, acclaimed company. So those are the kind of things. Talking, if you're entrepreneur, you know, you can talk about the entrepreneurial experience. Um, if, you've, if you've served on boards, if you've done any publications, any accomplishments, this is where you will highlight that, okay? Um, just a couple of, uh, this is really, get some help if you're not sure what to put in here. Um, this will really be what people will say if, if they've looked at the details, they've looked at your, your, your top profile, your photo, all of that. The next thing they're going to look at is you telling them a bit more about, uh, about yourself. You've got a bit more space here. 
In fact, you've got quite a bit more space than what you would have on your cover letter. So this is the place where you'll be able to use it, but use it carefully so that you can highlight your expertise and your skills. A couple of notes. If you're talking around, you've done a multi-million rand deal or you've worked and you've installed cell phone tire towers, First of all, cell phone is not a, a Canadian word, okay, but a cell phone tower in Mapamalanga and Pits on the Water, it, it's not going to help you at all, okay? So try and convert what you've got. So um, try and convert if it's rands that you're talking about and you've saved money on a project or you've done those things, convert them into Canadian dollars so that there's context around that. If you talk about your geographical locations, put that around. Um, and, and tell people uh, the extent of the kilometers or things like that, the distance if you've covered, if you've done those kind of things. Just let me give you a bit of context of, uh, of Canada, okay? Ca Canada is eight times bigger than South Africa, eight times, okay? So if you tell them about you have installed your, your cell phone tire, tower in Malanga um, and you've done some stuff in Hodazal, they have no idea where this is. They've got no context. So um, you need to kind of explain to them so that they can understand the size of what you are doing. If you have done international experience, this is where you'll highlight that. Okay. Um, bullet points can work here. The examples that I've got here doesn't have bullet points, but it works well. You will give, again, bring it down to the keyword. I've, to, I've spoken about keywords. Here's where you'll bring in those same kind of keywords or similar keywords that you've done. Have a look, ensure that you've got some keyword density right throughout your, your resume or right throughout your LinkedIn profile. Tell people what value are you bringing to the table. Tell them how you have changed companies. Those are the kind of things um, that works well in the summary section. On the experience side, okay. Just a last note, if you've worked on, on, on international companies, this is great. This is where you'll highlight them in that section. Um, your experience section, I've given you an example there where it really works well and it shows on the actual, this is where you start telling people about the job that you've done, you know, your companies that you've looked at, okay? Um, if you've done profit and loss management, converted into to, to, to Canadian dollars, okay? The digital penetration, you can see the examples there. Use, um, you can use uh, percentages, you can use the Canadian um, things, you know, the Canadian conversion around that. Um, you will put your accomplishments in there, um, again, the ones, because here you've got in your resume itself, you do not, you, a, a Canadian resume is one, two, maximum three pages. Okay, so you don't have enough space to tell them about your accomplishments, what you've done, um, and a bit of experience. So, you know what, use the space that you've got there, um, well, outline it, put in bullet points, it helps people to see what that is, um, and use it so that you can kind of um, so that people can get to understand a bit more about you. You need to be very careful in ensuring that the information that you put here, if you put in dates in here, it needs to correspond with what is on your resume. The, if, if, if it does not correspond, correspond, people will get confused and they won't understand what is happening in there. If there are gaps, you need to show the gaps. Um, and I'm not going to go through today how to show those gaps, but you, you need to show, it needs to, people will look at your resume or they will look at your LinkedIn profile and then go from there. If there's any discrepancies or differences, they're going to question that and it will bring you into disrepute. So be careful of the dates um, and the information that you put in there. Okay. Um, you don't want to confuse people. Okay, um, again, I've said here, you will adjust your resume. So the spaces in, in certain of them, and you'll see on my LinkedIn profile, if you've had two jobs or do two different you know, careers within one company, it's good to separate those two and highlight them so that you can put the keywords in there. Um, if you mention a company, you'll see there that I've, I've blurred out the companies. Okay, if you mention the company, try and tag the company. If you can tag the company, if you put the company in, LinkedIn will automatically try and find the company and add them in here. What that will help with is that people will see the, the, the recruiter or the company will be able to look at that company. They'll be able to learn more about the company, um, the size of the company, those kind of things. They can go into detail. That helps you from, uh, you, they will get to know you better. They will see the size of company that you've worked for. Those kind of things is quite important. So try and get that in, okay? You can, um, you can insert your, your accomplishments in here. You'll see the example shows it very well. Okay, but be brief and be factual. Give, give num numbers, give statistics. Okay, 
um, ensure that it, it ties back. If you, it needs to tie back to the skill sets and the keywords that we've spoken about. Okay. Um, one thing that I haven't seen uh, that really makes you stand out. I, I've not seen that in many um, in, in many profiles, and you you would want to see that is that if you've done any research papers, if you've done any articles, if you've appeared in any videos, if you've done any YouTube videos, uh, if you've written any documents, if you've appeared in an article, those kind of things, you can put them in there and it will come up. You'll see in my profile, I've got some of those. It will come up and it will be short snippets. I thought of a video that you put in there. Um, for me, it is if there was a testimonial or a reference, I put that in there. Um, if you could, that, it, that really, all that that would do is it will highlight you again as a specialist in your field. Use the space. Not many people are doing it. it it's going to make people stay on your, on your LinkedIn profile a bit longer. It will tell them a lot more about you. You will stand out if you do that. It's really a creative way. You can do so many things with that. It works, it works phenomenally well if you start wanting to become a thought leader. This is really where you can stand out. Okay. Um, Something that's equally important, and I'm not going to go into detail about that today, but you want to make a note for those ones, for the people that are making notes around this, is your accomplishments. Um, whatever awards, publications, courses, patent, patents, test scores, languages, organizations that you belong to, professional bodies, those kind of things, if you enter them into your, into your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn will select those for you. You need to... You, it would really benefit you to go into those. You can update them and you can add in. They stand out as part of your LinkedIn profile. So if you've got something that you, you're going to need to you come into this country, you've got no experience, Canadian experience. So you would you would want to use that to your benefit um, and, and, and really make you stand out. So use that space. Again, uh, if you take the extra effort, it's going to show. Are we still good to go? Cool. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So I've given yes, I've given you a screenshot of someone um, that is really awesome in the industry that I'm in, and again, uh, it shows me. I'll show you. This is her experience and uh, what she's done with it. Um, and again, this is not for a job seeker, but I wanted to show you how that cool that is. That is when you look at your experience section. She's used it to tell people. Um, to give some recommendations, which is fantastic. You you don't necessarily you won't necessarily do that with a, as a uh, when you look for a job, but it really stood out. But this is what I want to highlight onto you. And again, this is a woman that's got thousands and thousands and thousands of people following her. I think she's on fifty thousand, if I'm not wrong. Okay, she's an influencer, but it was it was quite relevant to the discussion. She's got the topics where she, um, some of these are photos, some of these are links to YouTube videos, some of these are to testimonials. You can even set up uh, in her calendar, you can set up, there's a link to that. She's used them effectively um, to, to make her marketing space, her real estate, real estate space work for her. If I, was a, if I was in a recruitment kind of position or I was looking for a job, as I said earlier, I will use this to highlight the accomplishments, maybe your certificate if you've uh, won an award, if you've published a paper, if you've put out an article, um, if you've uh, taken part um, in a speak, you know, an event, really you've got some space there to play with. It stands out immediately on your profile. It really looks cool. I've not seen it happen often. You will, uh, it will really look super. Okay, we're going down to skills and endorsements. I know I'm rushing through a couple of things, guys, but there's a lot. Um, so I really want to see what we've got on there. Um, I'll go through a couple of the questions. Can I, can I park you for just two or three seconds and then just answer some of your questions, okay? Um, would I recommend the premium LinkedIn package, Kylie? Yes, I would. Okay. Um, if you are looking for a job, uh, you get the first 30 days you get for free. So depending on where you are in your recruitment section or, or your, your, your applying, if you are six months away from coming to Canada, maybe not. Use the time to upgrade your profile. Do the basics that I've said here. Um, get that up and running. Um, become what they call an all-star. There's this whole process that you go through. I can do that in, in, in another training session with you. Um, once that's ready, 
And once you kind of go, okay, I'm ready. I I know I'm coming to Canada or I'm in Canada. Um, yes, there is a there is a, a a premium package on LinkedIn for job seekers. It is I think twenty nine dollars a month. It's worth the twenty nine dollars. It will put you into touch with people. Um, with recruiters, it will give you a lot of background. It will it will show you who's looking at your profile, um, those kind of things. People with similar jobs, you'll get a lot of insights. Um, if you're going to use LinkedIn actively, yes, it's definitely worth it. Um, if you've not seen the audio icon, it's there. I'm just going through the questions. It's really cool. I love it. Um, so, do we add an address? Even though we don't live there, uh, won't recruiters uh, assume I live in Canada already? Yes, they will assume you live in Canada already. Um, so this is what, something that I always say, never lie on, on, on your LinkedIn profile or your resume. It's never going to get you anywhere. Okay. But if you know that you are coming into Canada and you know that you are going to arrive, then start putting that address on. What it will do is it will, the, the automatic tracking system, the automated tracking system will not allow you in. It will kick you out. So when you are, um, I've heard this often where people are saying they have got, um, they are replying for 80 jobs, but they're not getting one response. The jobs, the ATS will kick you out automatically and immediately when your job is, if they're saying I'm looking for a person in Canada or I'm looking for a person in Ontario. If you are saying Johannesburg, that system will kick you out. So they, your, your CV won't even, your resume won't even get to them. Your LinkedIn profile would not even be presented to them. Okay, so it is something that um, one don't lie about it, but two you need to be you need to be strategic when you start looking at these jobs. Okay, um, so uh, that's something. Sorry, um, so we've got that. Mariska's asking, um, do you find that people are successful in finding jobs in Canada while still in South Africa, or is it better to visit and look for a job? It's a question I think, Gerard, you can tell people, uh, you know, Erasmus, I'm sure you guys will have a, a lot of opinions on this, um, how that works. They are, I can tell you a couple of, what I can tell you is my experience. I can tell you what I've seen, what I've seen with people coming into Canada. Um, it doesn't mean that that statistically wise, it doesn't mean that that is the true word. You need to take what is worth for you. Mm -hmm. I myself, we have found a job. We came to Canada. We came for a visit. We had a couple of coffee dates. It's worked. That's how we found a job. Okay. Um, Gerard works with people regularly. Gerard, I don't know if you've got a minute to tell you what, what are you seeing? People are coming in with finding jobs from South Africa. It's not easy. No, like, it's definitely not. I've had a couple, a very highly qualified couple that stayed with us in our Airbnb as well. And they looked for jobs for three months. They, were, they lived here and that's all they did every day is just go on the internet and look for jobs. And I must admit, when they eventually found what they were looking for, it exceeded their expectations. So, um, but it takes a lot of time. It's not easy to, uh, especially I was hiring manager for a big engineering company. And when we see a resume from overseas, we, we immediately uh, just trash it. So it's very important that you have what... Uh, uh, Milani is recommending to get your LinkedIn profile up and running so that at least you can get a lot of interest that you stand up, uh, stand head above the other candidates uh, that uh, you actually have the eye of the employer so that they will be very interested to contact you and make you a job offer because as you know in most cases the job offer is your passport into Canada but it's difficult and uh, but it can be done we've seen people that were recruited from South Africa and that work here and are very successful. So yeah, thanks, Gerard. I think that's great advice. It's happened. It's not saying it's not gonna happen. I can tell you that it's not easy. I have seen people that land here and within a week, you'll see on the on, on the Hazard website, there's a, a blog that came out, I think two or three days ago about Michael and he found his job within a week um, of landing, okay? We have seen, I have seen many instances where people find a job from South Africa. Um, again, if you are, if you, if you do, if it, it really depends on the route that you take, what you're prepared to put in, how you are doing it, what your skills are. Um, one thing I can say, generalist in Canada, not a good thing. A specialist, absolutely. What can you do? Here's the one thing I can tell you, what can you do right now that's gonna help you to get that job? Okay, that's what you would want to think. So it's a topic that, that it really, every, and every single person will give you a different answer to that, but I can tell you it was done. 
and, and the last thing I kind of want to comment on that one is that remember, I've showed you statistics of how many people are coming into Canada. You are not one of many. And, 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 and here I'm going to say something that might not make me as popular as people. And if you don't like that, I'm sorry. I'm, I still love you. Okay. But hear me. Okay. South African, I heard this comment and after three years, and I said this comment as well. So I'm talking to myself. South Africans are known for their hard work and they are known to get the things done. That's not going to get you the job. Okay. So um, I, you need to put that one aside. There are Canadians that's coming in. There are uh, Indians. There are Chinese. There are cultures and people and millions of them coming in. Your hard working is not going to make you stand up, I'm afraid. Okay. What you've achieved, if you don't tell them. And another thing is us uh, South Africans are typically quite, um, quite uh, shy in terms of showing our accomplishments. This is not the time to be shy. People are standing out. If you're not standing out, you're not going to get the job. So you need to know how to blow your own horn to make your look, yourself look like you know and you are the bee's knees. If you don't know, then get help. It's going to save you six to 12 months to get someone professionally in if you've not done your own, you know, if, if you're not sure how to do the resume. Yeah, can it be done yourself? Absolutely. Can your LinkedIn profile be done yourself? Absolutely. All of these things, nothing in this whole process cannot be done yourself. Okay. If you want to have it done quicker, might get need to get in someone that can help you if you're not sure. Get the help if you need to. Okay. I always say, if you're spending, here, here's another thought. If you're spending, this one's for free. Okay. If you're spending 300, 400, 500,000 Rand to get in to Canada, spending a little bit more effort on getting an immigration agent, if you need to get immigration advice, the right immigration advice, not the opinion of everybody and their dog. Okay spend the money. Uh, uh, guys, I can't, I say that with a lot of love. Okay. You might hate an immigration agent. You might love an immigration agent. It's really irrelevant. If you get the wrong advice, we have seen people coming in at this housing platform. It's taken them 18 to 20 to, to two, three years because they were given the wrong advice by people. Two years in a job search between if you, if you look at from 40, your job, your points gets lower. Two years can make you not find your, your, your place in Canada. You decide how much that money is worth to you. That's the kind of like completely off the topic, but kind of hear me on that. So I'm going to move on to, uh, to volunteer work. Um, okay. Um, maybe I just want to go back to, if, if you'll allow me two seconds, if, if you guys are okay with it, we'll be another 10 minutes. So we're going to run a bit over time. For, so for those that need to go, great stuff. Um, we're going to record the session. It will be shared. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Kylie, yes, I am the person. I help many people with their resumes. Happy to help where you need help. Um, going back just onto the skills, okay, um, and the endorsements. I've said this before, but when you, when you start editing the skills and endorsements that you've got, okay, look at your top 10 skills, okay. Um, I'm actually going to start and, and maybe just reverse a little back, bit back. On the skills and endorsements, let's have a look. What do you want to be known for? Um, what do you want people to say about you? Um, because this is going to show, this is one of the spots on your resume that's uh, on your LinkedIn profile that's going to stand out. Okay. So um, recruiters are looking for this. Go and have a look at your skills and endorsement section at the moment. I look at mine and I cringe sometimes, you know, and um, so you, you go and have a look at that. If you're saying that you want to be, you want to go into a management position, have you been endorsed for that? Have you got the skills? How many, people have, how many people have endorsed you for that? Again, keyword density, is it in your headline? You know, what are the top three things that you want to do? So this is how the LinkedIn, res, the LinkedIn and your resume starts talking to each other, that the top and the bottom section of LinkedIn. That's why you need to kind of have a look at those things. Again, I said in the beginning, what are your top 10 skills? Go write them down. Go and check. Are you endorsed for them? If you're not endorsed for them, go and endorse. Your, get yourself endorsed for those, okay? Um, are they corresponding with the job that you're applying for? Um, again, you, you can give some, it, it means what is the value that you're giving? You know, what is the value that you will bring? That's what you're going to bring to the table. Then you need to put that into your skills and endorsements. I've given an example here of someone, um, you know, that's in management is on his, uh, on his top uh, skill. 
okay he's saying he's going to do that and when people look at that they're going if 99 plus people have told that this guy's good at it you might as well kind of think this guy's seriously good at what he does okay um you can shift these around if you are in in the section and you can shift them around so what i would do is i would play with them to put the, the top three you can typically put top three you can pin them at the top so decide which top three are there and put them in order of importance Go and check with friends, families, dogs, and whoever wants to endorse you for something, go get endorsed, okay? It's going to make a difference. It's going to stand out. The more you've got, this is almost like a almost like a, a Facebook uh, like, you know, that vanity campaign. This is the one place where it's a little bit of vain that you need to kind of play. Put them out there. Get people to endorse you, okay? Um, while, if you're in South Africa, start doing that because the more you've got that, um, but it's got to be for the right reason. Don't let, if people endorse you, random people endorse you for the wrong things, uh, you need to just kind of know what is it that you would want to be known for and put that out there, okay? Um, go to the top, uh, if, if you've, um, again, LinkedIn is a search engine. It's part of a search engine. You've seen when you Googled yourself, if LinkedIn comes in, it shows you LinkedIn is part of your search engine. So yeah, if you're talking about management, if people are endorsing you on, on, on LinkedIn for this, if the, if you put that in your headline, this is the thing that LinkedIn uh, will pick up. So again, if you endorse for it, it will pick it up, it will show it, um, and it will validate to the recruiter that this person can do the job, okay? Um, it's kind of like, it's as I said, it's a search engine. If you've had 30 endorsements for that skill set, you'll stand out. It will show 30 uh, that 30 people in your network endorsed you for that skill. It will validate you to the recruiter that you've got those skills. It will most likely put you at the top of the searches. Okay. Um, and it will kind of just help you to get your name out there. So try and put some attention and some effort into it. Uh, think strategically about what you want to be known for. Reach out to your network. Reach out to the people and saying, can you endorse me for this? Um, say to them, you know, if you want to guide them along what you would want them to do. They don't know. Um, and if you are not endorsed as for specific skills, then there's a gap in there that you might need to fill. Does that make sense, guys? Oh, awesome. Great. So volunteer work, volunteer, how, you know, how important is that? How do you put it if you're a dog watcher or you love animals and now suddenly you're going to put that, is that relevant? Is it practical? Um, what does that look like? Um, and how do you put that into your, uh, into your LinkedIn profile? Uh, so we're going to kind of get through to that. Um, everyone says it's important and yes, it is. Okay. Is it going to make a difference in your resume or in your LinkedIn profile? Is it going to get you the job? No, it's not going to get you the job. It's not going to make or break, make or break the job. But it will, if it is related back to the industry that you are looking at for a job, it will help put you out there. Okay. So a couple of pointers around that is try and relate it back to the job that you are doing right now. Okay. Um, if it is, uh, again, with your keywords, Try if you are part of a professional body. If some of your the, the the jobs that you do, especially in the engineering field, those kind of things, you need to belong to a professional body. Even when you move over here and you need to qualify, you know, if you need to requalify, if you're a lawyer or, or whatever, they are professional bodies. If you are you belonging to some of them, if you're still in South Africa, if you're not, then try and get you know get yourself aligned to them. Start volunteering in that case there. If you are a uh, if you are a content writer, for instance, and or you know you write for magazines, those kind of things, um, try and write for uh, if, uh, you can then and you've got a passion for animals. Uh, what you can do is say try and write content for the H. Uh, what is it called in South Africa? The, um, HSBC is it? Whatever it's called. Which one? No, SBCA. 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 You see, I've forgotten what it's called there. Yeah, so the SBCA. So if you love animals, kind of try and volunteer at the SBCA. But then if you're a writer, write articles for their website. If you're a developer, get do them an app. You know, that is what's showing to people. Yes, you're volunteering, but you're volunteering in your industry. And that's how you start relating your, uh, your, your, your industry. Um, go have a look. What are people in your industry? What are they volunteering at? Okay, I know that volunteering is not a massive thing in, in South Africa. In Canada, it is. People are volunteering, okay, and people are using it. 
to their benefit so that they can stand out. Um, I have got within how's it I've got content writers that write for me because they have, you know, they that is the industry that they want to be in. So we can get their content published out on um, on the Canadian market. So that is where it will really help you along. Okay. Um, yeah, Canadians, they volunteer and they volunteer a lot. It's going to help you. Okay, recommendations. Interesting thing. Have you got any recommendations on your resume, on your LinkedIn profile? How old are they? Are they older than a year? Are they older than two years? Okay, cool. So um, this, not, this is something that you need to, to not ignore. Um, people are going to, again, this will help because you don't have the space. You can't always go back, especially when you're in Canada and suddenly you want to ask for a reference. It's difficult to tell people in Canada and your resume, you don't put down references. It's not a part, it's not part of your resume. Um, and they will not typically, and again, um, it's, it's, uh, they, they check on references, make no mistake. But because your references might be in South Africa, they might not always phone South Africa. So that's why you will have a reference. It's easier much easier if your re recommendations are here. These are your references. It's easier to get these re references while you're on South Africa. Get as many as you can. Again, a couple of tips around that, okay, um, is make sure that the keywords, you know, if you're saying that you want to be recommended for your experience of uh, being a leader or creating opportunities or, you know, that you're a specialist in the mortgage field, those kind of things, Put that out there. You want to make sure that these tell the people that you can do the job, especially when you do not have Canadian experience. Mortgage industry as a mortgage industry is a mortgage industry. Okay. Engineering is engineering is engineering. It might look different. Okay. And you will find that here they're saying, well, sorry, you don't have Canadian experience in this field. You're going, you know what? It doesn't matter. In the field that you are in, if, the, if it's the same industry and people are saying, you know what, he or she adapted and within this industry, this is, uh, it's made her, she's got a great knowledge or a broad experience. That's when it, it's going to make you stand out on that. So you would want to think about, um, do that. Um, it's difficult to get people to write recommendations. So um, it will be worthwhile kind of spending some time to, to ramp up to that. I always say to people, kind of prepare a script of what you would want them to ask. So if you prepare that, um, if you prepare a, a little email to say to them, you would love them to do a recommendation and kind of tell them it would be great if you could mention when we worked here or there together, highlight a couple of the skills that you've worked in. So that give them an idea of what you would want them to say. Um, it's not that you're writing it for them, but you are helping them along to remember. If it is a company that was long ago, you would want to say, you know what, so that they could remember what you did. They don't remember. So you're going to need to just kind of guide them along. It helps to give them. So if you want to get into this, start giving recommendations to people that you want them to give you a recommendation. So it helps to give to receive, okay? Um, it's quite important that those recommendations are recent. So that's why I've asked you, what have you got here? So if you've got a recommendation that's done in 2015, you know what, it, it might not be as valuable. So try and get as many as you can that would be related in the industry that you are in that, that is recent, especially when you're coming over, okay? Um, what would a solid recommendation look like? Here's a couple of things that it will include, okay? It's shortened to the point. No one's going to read a full essay, okay? So what you see here on this example is quite a long one, okay? Um, that's kind of as long as I would get, okay? Um, they need to explain how they know you. Um, that would be quite cool. Um, and, and it'll help people to understand if they were your manager, whether your peer, you know, what, in what capacity so that people would understand that. Um, sp specific professional qualities. If there are specific ones, it's great if it's highlighted here, if they praise you on those ones. Um, again, think keywords and skill sets. Okay. And then most importantly, what is that that you want out of this? Okay. Is what value? Did you deliver? It needs to say what while you were working with them in a whatever capacity it is, as a colleague, as a peer, as a boss, as a junior, what value did you deliver at that time? That's what you would want to get. That would be the perfect recommendation to you. Okay. 
influence in groups. I don't know if you thought if that's really important, but it is. Here's when you start using LinkedIn, not just to put it in and it's not a copy. Here's the thing, guys. LinkedIn is not a copy of your resume. It doesn't mean that whatever you see on your resume needs to be identical. It needs to be the same. Hear me when I say it needs to have the same corresponding information, but it needs to tell people more than what your resume tells you. Okay, so just having a duplicate of both is not going to tell much of who you are. So here's one of the places where you can stand out. You can you can really start making use of LinkedIn and start getting connected and networked in this. Um, so um, what is in there? Okay, um, this will tell people what does that tell recruitments, uh, recruiters and companies. It will tell people what are your likes, who you're listening to, what are you doing. How are you participating? That is what you can see on that. What can you see on that group? It's your influencers, companies, uh, people that you follow. So influencers, companies that you follow, groups that you follow, and schools. Okay. Um, so people would look at this. How would the recruiter look at this? If it is something that they would say, okay, great. This guy is interested in, you know, what there's a specific guy, you know, in terms of they following Ryan. Oh, I'm also following Ryan. What do you think about Ryan? What is your opinion about him? You know, um, if you are in the social media industry, one guy that I simply do not, I, I, I do not understand him and I, I won't follow him is, is Gary Funder, Funder Chuck, I think is, is how you spell his surname. He swears, he's rude, people love him. I can't, I, honestly, I don't follow him. But if the, so what will happen is if that kind of person is, if you, if I was a recruiter and that person's on that board, okay, and you're following him, it will kind of tell me who are you liking and what are your likes and dislikes. It would, it could be a, it would be able to give you a link into that person so that if you are invited to a, a, a connection, if you've done, if you've reciprocated and you've looked at your recruiter or your company and you've looked at information, you can say, hey, I see that you follow Roy Guri. This is what I'm thinking about him. What have you seen? This is fantastic. This is what he's saying. What's your opinion on that? Have you read what he said here? If you start sharing that information, same thing is applic uh, very much applicable. If you are, if there is a recruiter um, or a company um, and you really want to go and work there and you really want to investigate them, if you are following them as a company and they see that, they would go, great, this person has really taken the time to go and follow our company and see what it is about. It will help you prepare for your resume, for your interview. It will, it will just help you to stand out there. You don't have to do it. It's absolutely up to you, but it really will help you to stand out and start networking on LinkedIn. That's when you really start using LinkedIn for the purposes of what LinkedIn is for. Okay. Um, the same as schools. If you're an alumni, um, networking, finding fellow people, fellow South Africans in Canada is important. If you if you see that people are following schools and you are both at you were both at PICA or you were both at UCT or whatever it might be, immediately you've got a connection to that person. You can see that. If they can see that you're in the same group, you will be able to connect with them much easier, opening up doors for you. Once you've applied for a job and you both happen to work at the, or you want to apply for a job that's at that company, you know that there's a form of connection because you guys are both um, at the same university. You're following the same groups. You've got the same connections. Um, so that's where it's interesting. That's where it starts getting to that network and it gives you that point of connection. Um, Let's have a look. I said around the companies, okay. Um, we can use it, I'll, I'll take, if you guys are interested, you can let me know um, and we can do a bit of sessions where we go into these things in depth. Uh, we will have a look at that. Um, what you would want to do, just two or three things as we're highlighting on that is, if you wanna grow your network, if you wanna highlight your skills, if you wanna start, if you wanna start being part of groups or influences or interests, if you start participating in this, um, it will make you stand out as a thought leader. Again, with everything that I'm saying, if you do not do this consistently throughout the time, it's not worth doing. So if you start doing using LinkedIn effectively, just ensure that you've got the time and the capacity to do that, okay? Um, so yeah, just a final, a final thought on everything. If, if I was in the recruitment industry and or if I was looking for a person and I look at this, and you show up in my search, I've looked for you. Your picture is good. Your headline's fantastic. Okay, you've got a great summary. Your history is really on point. Okay, you're following the influencers. You're part of groups. 
you're, you're part of that network, you're following the company that you would want to, you know, recruit for, you're going to show up. I'm going to take that effort to look further into, into your resume or start connecting with you. If you send me a connection request, personalized, okay, that's where the difference is going to, you already have got a lot more in terms of opening up that door if you've done what I've said. Okay. So let's see what else have we got here. I think that's me. So uh, there's a lot of questions. I don't know if we've got, I've got two or three more minutes that we can kind of, if you've got specific questions you want to answer, please connect with me on my personal profile. Um, follow House at Canada on LinkedIn. I share a lot of when the next training sessions kind of come up, what are we doing? I'm sharing some videos. If you are in the creative industry or you just want to follow my thinking, my thoughts, um, what we are doing, what is happening on Canada, um, that's where I will share my thoughts. This is really where you kind of would get the information. Um, the next session, we're looking at March the 29th. What am I going to look at? These are the ideas I'm trying to, uh, to explore is I spoke very briefly around what is the ATS? It's the applicant tracking system. It's the automated tracking system that's used in Canada. How will it help you? What can you do around that? If you want to, the networking and LinkedIn is such a big thing. I think you can do, I can do 10 sessions and I won't even cover, you know, start to scratch where we are with the beginning of how LinkedIn can really help you. Um, and then researching and connecting with potential employees. How do you do that effectively? Those are the, the sessions that I'm looking at doing. Um, I have connected with quite a few recruiters in the marketing field. I've uh, connected with the financial industry. Um, Gerard's connected to some great engineering companies. We can help you um, with, uh, with that, putting you into, into touch with people. We'd love to hear where we can help you to, to connect. Um, have you found value from this session? Please, I would love some feedback. I, I really would appreciate what stood out for you. Send me a mail, info at house, is my email address. Um, I'm just gonna go back to, to my LinkedIn. Um, come, please come and tell me, share, what are you struggling with? What is it that you've got? I am not able to find you a job, but I've, I'm able to help you connect. Um, I'm able to show you what works. I am able to, to, to kind of share the thoughts of what I'm seeing. I'm able to tell you what people I, because of, uh, of the people that we deal with at Housit, um, we have got, we have working with companies like Canada Abroad. They bring in thousands of, of, of people into, into Canada every, every year. We are connecting to people like Andrea that you guys know. She gets the questions. We get what people are asking. We want to answer what you are asking us because we want you to help so that you don't necessarily have to go through this on your own. Um, it's there, you used to help. There's people like Harrod, he helps people settle in, you know, getting, you know, when you hear that you don't just come into a closed door and you're not, you don't know what to happen, how to pick up on these things. We're here to help you guys. We've been through it. Um, some of these mistakes you don't have to make. Some of them we can help you with that, okay? Um, any last questions? Kylie has got one. Is Indeed the main recruiter that we should use? Indeed the, is, is one of the, the biggest one. Uh, Zip is another one. Um, all of these guys are on LinkedIn. Okay. There's something which they call the, uh, what's it called? The secret network. I, I don't know what the, I, I've lost my words now. I think I've said 10,000 million more words than what I normally say. Okay. But there is a, there's kind of like a, 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 the jobs that's not advertised. How do you get through to those jobs that's not on LinkedIn? How do you, and, and that, that comes from, and you'll hear people speak about that. That is literally the networking. It's the networking that's happening, okay? Um, and sometimes when the job gets advertised, you feel like, oh, hold on, but this job is just advertised, but they've already recruited someone, but they have to go through the process. There's that as well. That is when you use LinkedIn. That is when you start connecting. That is when you understand what a coffee date is like. That is when you kind of get into not just applying and hitting the apply button on LinkedIn, but it's kind of connecting to people working within that company, um, you know, building relationships already, following. That is what that is. That's the hidden, that's what it's called, the hidden job market in Canada. Sorry, I was looking for that word. So um, yes, uh, indeed is one. If you are a generalist in your skills and if you kind of haven't covered what I've, I've, I've looked at now at your resume, applying through Indeed, applying through ZipRecruiter, applying through many of the other ones, um, it might not get you there. 
um, you might need to, because the, the, all of them, bar none, are using the automated tracking system, all of them. Okay, so uh, you will understand why you apply for 100 jobs and get no responses. And we can help you through the process of maybe getting through the automated tracking system, but there are other ways of doing that. Um, but the first step that you have to do is to improve your resume. Um, your resume has to be up to date and your LinkedIn profile has to be up to date. Um, if, those, if, if those aren't, then you're kind of almost um, at a loss because in, in Canada, people are using LinkedIn effectively um, to network. They're using it as a great network tool. I have never used LinkedIn in South Africa the way I'm using LinkedIn in Canada. Um, if there's a person to be connected to, you will find him on LinkedIn. Um, so that is, that's literally where people are. That's where they're looking for jobs. 94%, uh, I think I said that in the beginning, 94% of recruiters are on LinkedIn. Um, so that's where you, that's where you need to be. Um, if you stand up, that's what's going to get you that job. Um, so I think I've covered all of that. I'd love you guys to connect with me. I would appreciate your feedback. Um, if anybody, I'm going to shoot the breeze for the next 10 minutes. You can unmute and you can ask me some questions. I'll see if I can answer them. Um, please let me know what you found valuable. Please let me know what you want to know. Is there, are there any specific questions here? Andrew, Mariska, Lindsay, Brendan, Derek, you must have a question or two. Hi, Mel, how are you? Good, how are you? No, doing well, thank you very much. Sorry, my video just uh, put my camera on, there we go. <laughs> um, no, thank you very much for the session. I really appreciate it. I picked up on a lot of things, so there's definitely a couple of changes which I need to do to my profile, uh, which I'm happy to go and do. And I definitely need to climb into those endorsements. Uh, I never even thought about asking for endorsements. So there's a lot of things that I picked up now. And uh, I will definitely go and change a couple of that and get some requests and get some recommendations as well. That's cool. And you could, if you do that now, then before the time, you know, if, if, if you start doing that whole process, it makes it so much easier when you get here. Because when you get here and you need to start asking, you know, John from HR, you know what? It's not going to happen because they've forgotten who you are, you know? And um, I don't know. It's, 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 it's kind of when you leave the last couple of months when you're going through the process, you want to just get here. So your mind is not on getting these things right. And when you get, you go, oh, crap, I need to do this and that and the other. And then it's difficult to get hold of these people. So whatever you can do on that side now to help you prepare, um, is, is, is good. You, one thing I didn't mention perhaps is how do you, um, if you can set your profile onto private um, from a perspective of um, updating your profile so that people won't see every time that you update your profile with certain, you know, so it's there, but the, your, your network won't be notified about that. So that might be while you're in this process and you might not want people to know that you are, you know, looking at changing jobs or you're trying to find a job. Um, that might be something that you just want to do is just set your, your profile in private. Um, there's a lot of settings. I haven't gone through them um, right now, uh, but they are there. If you're not sure where to go, let me know and I'll make a training session for you guys um, out of that. Anybody else? Come on, give me some questions. Hi, Milani um, and everybody. Um, thank you for this session. It was a bit of an eye opener because uh, you hit the nail on the head where um, we tend to look at uh, what needs to happen and not focus on something like, well, let's call it what it is, something simple like your, like your LinkedIn account, uh, which is probably forms the basis for, for starting to network and, 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 and build from there. So um, yeah, this has been a highly motivating experience and, and um, also very insightful. So, and, and best of luck to everybody else. It, it's good to see that, that sometimes you feel alone in this thing. So uh, thank you for that. We will probably in the future definitely engage with you more. So yeah, that's my two cents. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It's great to hear the feedback. Um, people are using LinkedIn in Canada. It, it's, it's the main tool that they are using to network. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's important that you kind of do that. Uh, Robert's asking, how would you score your profile? So when you start out your, uh, your, your updating your profile, it will come up automatically. The system has got on the editing screen, um, 
if you if you want to, uh, you can send me a separate email and I'll try and do some screenshots for, uh, shots for you guys. But it comes up and it says, hey, you can be an all star. So the interesting things ab about um, an all star uh, being an all star is it will give you the statistics show that you are 41 times more likely to um, uh, get in front of, of recruiters. Um, it up, it includes, you know, it up, ups your profile 41 uh, times more. So um, it takes you through the process of saying, and you need to do this, and you need to ask for this, and have you forgotten about it? So it's like a, it's an intuitive uh, process that it takes you through, and then it says, hey, you've become an all-star. So um, it is quite easy to do that, but you can, it's it's the daily tweaks. It's, a, you know, kind of going through things um, to do that. If you, if you are taking the next step, I think, which is someone like, uh, you know, I, I know for myself, um, and, and, and other people, if I, if I want to become a thought leader, um, it's starting to share in groups and, influ uh, you know, and becoming the influencers and sharing information and not just going, uh, if you, have you found this, uh, who's done this? Um, if, if you put your camera on and, and put your hand up, uh, I'd love to see this, but um, have you, uh, if you're on LinkedIn, and uh, people, uh, Derek, I've told you guys this the other day, if you're on LinkedIn and, and people, uh, you, you want to give a comment and you say, great comment, okay, um, and that's all you say, it's great, or nice article, you know, or you just do a thumbs up, what do you think it's going to do to you as an influencer or a, 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 a thought leader? You are wanting to become the top civil engineer, or you want to be known as the top project manager, or the top down planner, what's that going to do? If I'm a recruiter, what's it going to say to me? That much, a fat zero, okay, I'm being harsh. I'm being South Africa. I love you guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up as it is. Okay. It's going to do nothing. If you are giving, if you're giving input and you're going great comment. Okay. And this is where you play the algorithm. If you're saying, if you like the comment and you're saying, um, and you pick up and you, you, you say a feedback, you are telling people what you are thinking, why you're thinking it's a good article, why you are, what stood out for you? What is it? ask a question, the algorithm kicks in and it starts playing and your content's being put in front of more people. And that's, that's when it starts playing towards you. But that's when you want to play this game. That's when you want to start working with the system. Um, and this will only work if, and, and again, if you start doing this, if your LinkedIn profile is not up to date, why are you doing it? Okay, because if people go, hey, I want to see your profile. I want to see what Mel's doing, okay? be prepared to know what they see is what they see on LinkedIn. Okay. So if you're not prepared for them to see who you are, then maybe it's not the time to start commenting on that. Maybe you should just kind of change that, um, that, that article, that, that process, not the article, sorry. So um, I don't, uh, are there any questions? I know, uh, Jen, have you got any, Aki? Any questions? Are we all quiet? Okay, the Madonna, any questions? At the moment, all good. It's just been quite Is useful, so I've picked up some tweaks. Cool. Awesome. All good so from our gonna... side, thank you. Awesome. I'm going to leave you with the last thought of saying, again, the most important thing I think out of what I'm saying to you today is these are my thoughts. This is what I've shared with people that I've helped. This has helped other people. This is not, it is practical um, of what I have seen, you will have to change your resume, your cover letter, your uh, LinkedIn profile as your career moves and changes. It will not, it's not, even if we write your resume, what I'm putting to you is what works well, but it will need tweaking. So if Mel has said something to you and maybe you get a different opinion, you need to look at that opinion and find out who's it from do I really value Mel's opinion or someone else's opinion and take it into your context? Because this market changes, the industry changes, the market changes, LinkedIn changes, the algorithm, all of this change, you need to work it to what is for your benefit, okay? And if you are not going to change that, then it might not work for you as you need it to work. So use what is relevant, understand that you're going to need to tweak it, understand that it's never going to be 100%. But if it gets you the job and it makes you stand out and it serves the purpose of what you want to do on LinkedIn, this is the best place to put your energy and your effort in for a job searching and for a career perspective. This is really the place.
where it will come together for you if you put that effort in.